Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. Hi, yes, indeed. This is Jerry Hickey, nutritional pharmacist. Today, we're talking about the impact of a good multivitamin on your immune system. I've been taking multivitamins, high quality, consistently for decades. There's a great deal of evidence that if it's a well-thought-out multiple vitamin from a dependable source, and they're using high-quality ingredients, it can really support your health. For instance, uh, there's been a number of studies in older people who consistently take a multivitamin, fewer heart attacks, fewer heart occurrences that are bad. Um, There's also evidence that there's a reduced risk of cancer with a multivitamin. It was an 8% reduced risk of cancer. It was a study in men. It was the Physician's Health Study too, But there was an 8% drop in the incidence of cancer. Um, That's actually pretty good because 8% would protect tens of thousands of Americans. Um, There's also a lot of data that a good multi can help protect eye health. And once again, going back to the Physician's Health Study 2, they found that men who were older, who consistently used a multivitamin, a lower occurrence of cataracts. Now, if you add a couple of high-quality ingredients like lutein and zeaxanthin, you may be even able to cover the most common cause of blindness in aging people called age-related macular degeneration. We've discussed that in previous episodes. And also, there's a lot of data when you take a good multivitamin at any age. It improves mental energy. It supports memory functions, how sharp your brain is, how quickly it works. But now there's building data that multivitamins are good for the immune system. So let's discuss that because it's the times of coronavirus and before you blink it's going to be flu season and cough and cold season. So anything that makes you a little bit stronger when it comes to infections can only be a good thing. So here's a report. uh, It's published in BMJ Nutrition Prevention and Health. BMJ stands for British Medical Journal. It's uh, researchers from the Global Center for Nutrition and Health. It's at St. John's Innovation Center in Cambridge, over by Cambridge University. And they're looking at COVID-19 infections and micronutrient deficiencies. And here's what they say. I mean, this just came out. This came out June 24th of this year. Practitioners should make micronutrient deficiencies a key consideration during the COVID-19 screening process. A recently published research review strongly recommends. Micronutrient deficiencies. Now, these are things that are found in a multivitamin. When you take a multivitamin, you get a good cross-section of nutrients at a decent quantity, at a decent potency, and so you're guaranteed to get them. And a good multivitamin fills in the gaps in your diet anyway. It's always smart to take a good multivitamin. Uh, in fact, just to take a little dog leg here in the, uh, in the conversation, they did a study of uh, pretty young, healthy professionals in England about two years ago. And these people ate a a pretty well-balanced, high-quality diet, and they exercised, they were physically fit. And they found that even these people, in the top of their game, in the top of their field, if they gave them B vitamins, a cross-section of B vitamins, their brain performed better. It shows you it's very difficult to get sufficient levels of all the different vitamins and minerals from your food. And that's one reason why Many uh, registered dietitians recommend their clients take a multivitamin to fill in the gaps in your diet because if you have a gap in one nutrient like zinc or vitamin D or magnesium, there's a domino effect where it affects other nutrients. And this could pile up and actually lower your resistance to viruses and bacteria. Not a good thing right now. So they're looking at a cross-section of nutrients And they're talking about vitamin A. Now, I usually opt for natural beta-carotene, and that's an important point. It has to be natural when it comes to beta-carotene. The synthetic doesn't work well. But they're saying, hey, you need vitamin A 
for natural killer cell activity. That's a really important immune cell. Natural killer cells kind of cover the time period between your first response to an infection and then the time it takes to make antibodies to that infection and memory T cells, which is generally about five to seven days. So natural uh, killer cells are very important and they don't work so well in older people and they don't work well in undernourished people. So vitamin A and natural beta carotene support natural killer cell activity, but they also support the first response by the immune system, which is macrophages and neutrophils. These are cells that get to the infection very quickly. And you need certain nutrients to create them uh, so that they can get to the infection and so that they can cope with and kill the virus. Vitamin A is also needed for uh, creating antibodies on your B cells. So there's a lot of things going on. Vitamin E. Vitamin E is more for protecting your cells from your own immune system, but it is part of the response by the immune system. The mineral selenium, the mineral zinc. I mean, zinc has so many functions with the immune system. You need, you need zinc to create immune cells. You need zinc for immune cells to respond to an infection, but you also need zinc to protect your body from the virus or bacterium and from your own immune system because both of them can cause damage. Vitamin C vitamin D. You know, vitamin D is so important to immune cells that they can actually activate vitamin D. We once thought that only your kidneys could activate vitamin D. Vitamin D was stored in the liver and released in a, a, a specific manner, and then it was activated by the kidneys. But now we know that vitamin D is so important to your immune cells that many immune cells have the ability to activate vitamin D. So vitamin D interacts with them, and they could do a better job killing viruses and bacteria. So that's one report on a bunch of nutrients, and you'd find them all in a multi. This is why I've been making the case on my radio program recently and talking to my clients and sending out emails that a multivitamin is very important right now. So here's uh, July 18th, 2008. We're going all the way back down memory lane. Older people can help prevent infections by taking certain nutritional supplements. Now, this is Wake Forest University School of Medicine. Wake Forest University School of Medicine is in North Carolina. It's in Winston-Salem, to be specific. It's in the journal Clinical Infectious Diseases. And they said, based on their review, adults over the age of 65 can benefit from a daily multivitamin and mineral supplement, as well as additional supplements to bring their daily intake of zinc to 20 milligrams and selenium to 100 micrograms, and bring their vitamin E intake up. And they said available evidence suggests that these supplements are likely to enhance immune function and also may boost vaccine responses. That's a totally different thing. So let's discuss that. When you grow older, when you hit your 60s, uh, you start to develop immunosenescence. Your, your immune system slows down. Now, there are different nutrients that can help that. Uh, probiotic bacteria have an impact, certain strains, especially Bifidobacterium animalis, subspecies lactis. Melatonin at night, if you're lacking it, helps with immunosenescence. In fact, it's interesting, now we're finding that melatonin is not just released from the brain to help you sleep at night, but it's released from your digestive tract for healing and digestive tract function, and from your immune cells for the immune system to function. But here we're talking about a multivitamin, really just a multivitamin. And they said available evidence suggests these supplements are likely to enhance immune function, but listen to this, and also may boost vaccine responses in healthy older adults. Now that's important. Vaccines don't work in several groups of people. Vaccines don't work well in the elderly. The flu vaccine is not as strong. Uh, that's why they've made a super-powered flu vaccine now to elicit the formation of enough antibodies in response to the immunization. The regular flu vaccine in a very elderly person, they don't make enough antibodies to protect themselves. They could get, still get sick. But when they give them this more powerful version, it stimulates the immune system enough that they start making enough antibodies. But in general, if they're lacking these supplements like vitamin C, vitamin D, zinc, selenium, vitamin E, beta carotene or vitamin A, and certain B vitamins, the immune system will just not respond well to immunization and the flu shot won't work as well or the pneumonia vaccine or the shingles vaccine. Uh, now the other group besides the elderly is people who are obese. And especially if you're obese with diabetes, your immune system is pretty broken down. But I don't think it's well understood that obese people, 
It's not well gener- it's it's just not getting into circulation. Obese people immunizations don't work well on them. So even when they come out with the COVID-19 immunization, it's not going to work that well. So at least get your vitamins back and your minerals back up to par where they should be because at least this will help you respond to the immunization better when it finally comes out. So here's another one. This is the Faculty of Medicine, University of Southampton and NIHR Southampton Biomedical Research Center. That's, they're both in England. It's in the journal Nutrients in 2018, October 17 to be exact. And now they're looking at the same thing. They're saying that the need for certain minerals changes with age. And for instance, if you lack one vitamin or mineral, it affects many others because they, they function together. They function as a team. Vitamins and minerals don't work individually. They re, you re, If you're low in one, it affects many others. So that's why I'm saying when you get a multi, we're covering all the bases with the vitamins and minerals at least. So here they're saying older people um, have trouble absorbing certain nutrients. Certain nutrients don't work as well. And they're talking about for immunocompetence, you need vitamin A, so that's vitamin A or beta carotene, vitamin C, vitamin D as in David, and always D3, it works bad in D2. Vitamin E, you don't need a lot of vitamin E. Some B2, some B6, some B12, some folic acid, which is also a B vitamin, iron, selenium, and zinc. And they're saying diet alone in older people is not sufficient for supplying enough of these nutrients. Now, the reason I speak about this today is this report came out this morning, August 18th, 2020. Multivitamin and mineral supplements linked to less severe and shorter lasting illness symptoms. So they're not just saying the symptoms are milder, which indicates that the virus or the bacteria is weaker, but that you're not as sick for as long in older people. Now, this is Oregon State University. It's in the journal Nutrients, which is a great journal, a very non-biased, very, very, very good journal, very dependable journal. In older people, if they took a multivitamin mineral supplement with zinc and good amounts of vitamin C over a three-month period, if they got sick, it was for a shorter period and the symptoms were much milder. So let's go into the data. So they found that um, vitamin C and vitamin D and zinc levels increased with a multivitamin. And that's good because they're all needed by your immune system. Uh, but here they said, most intriguingly, illness symptoms reported by this group were less severe. Okay, so you didn't get as sick. That's important with COVID-19. That's important with pneumonia. And that's important with the flu. That's important with any infection. They didn't get as sick. And the illness went away faster than those experienced by the placebo group. Now, both of them did get sick, both groups. The groups on placebo, which is a fake pill, they got sick. The people on the multivitamin, they did get sick. But the days of sickness in the multi-group, in the multivitamin group, the supplemented group, far fewer. Uh, they averaged fewer than three days, whereas the people on placebo they average being sick for six days. That's a big improvement in older people. So the, re the, the lead researcher, Dr. Adrian Gombart, uh, professor of biochemistry and biophysics at the Linus Pauling Institute, uh, he said the observed illness differences were striking. He went on to say, as people get older, the risk of vitamin and mineral deficiencies that contribute to age-related immune system deficiencies rises. Across the U.S., Canada, and Europe, research suggests more than one-third of older adults are deficient in at least one micronutrient and often many more than one micronutrient. He goes on to say, that likely contributes to a decline in the immune system, most often characterized by increased levels of inflammation, reduced innate immune function, and reduced T cell function. Now that's really bad. T cells have a memory. They're one of the ways that you prevent a second infection with COVID-19. Now, Dr. Gombart says, since multinutrients support immune function, older adults are often Older adults often benefit from multivitamin and mineral supplements. These are readily available, inexpensive, and generally regarded as safe. So here's what they found. If they got infected, the infection was less severe and it lasted for a shorter time. In other words, it was a safer situation. But not all multivitamins 
are the same. So here's some tips on choosing a multivitamin. I mean, some, some of the companies use inferior sources of minerals. Um, for instance, um, GTF chromium or chromium picolinate is going to be far better absorbed than chromium chloride. And you want to get natural sources of vitamin E or beta carotene because the synthetic sources block the natural ingredients from getting to their receptor sites. They won't even work. Uh, lutein and lycopene. Lutein for your vision and your memory needs to be natural. The synthetic doesn't work. Lycopene, the red pigment from tomato sauce, that needs to be natural. That helps protect your skin. Uh, men's prostates, to a degree women's breasts, your heart. Um, and, and by the way, there's many, many meta-analysis of human clinical trials, over 40 of them showing lycopene lowers the, the, the risk of a bunch of cancers, including what seems to be prostate cancer, colon cancer, and breast cancer, and possibly lung cancer too. Now, your multivitamin should be CGMP. That means current good manufacturing practices. That's the level of manufacturing that's the same as a drug company where you measure the ingredients accurately, you test the supplements to make sure they're clean, that there's no bacteria in there and there's no heavy metals like arsenic and lead and mercury and things like that and cadmium, uh, that you put the right potency in there, that it's fresh, that's CGMP. Uh, we of course go further, we want non-GMO because we don't want any of those funky sprays in our products. Don't get a multi with folic acid, you want methyl tetrahydrofolate, that's the active version. Folic acid is a synthetic version. It's different than the folate found in fruits and vegetables. And it doesn't seem to work as well as the active form in many people. Many people fail to convert the synthetic folic acid into the active form, which is methyl tetrahydrofolate. And you need methyl tetrahydrofolate for brain health, to protect your heart from heart disease, to lower your risk of dementia and heart attack and stroke, but also to protect your bones and your joint tissue, like your hip joint, and also um, active folate lowers the first two steps in the cancer process, initiation and promotion. Cancer could be broken down into four steps. It's much more complex than that, but initiation is something causing it in the first place, you know, like radiation then promotion, turning it into cancer, then the cancer process, then metastasis. So you need folate, the active folate, to prevent the cancer process. Now, rather than cyanocobalamin, which is uh, the synthetic B12, uh, you want methylcobalamin because that's the active version in the brain. And there's some evidence to support that older people do not convert cyanocobalamin as effectively into the active form of B12 for brain health. So you might want to get one with methylcobalamin. And you want enough B complex in there to support brain energy and heart function. Now, here's another thing. A lot of multivitamin companies put a lot of extra calcium in their multivitamin, and they call it a women's multi. And I think that that's just bad for your health. And I'm going to tell you why. You should take your calcium at a separate time. Calcium will block the absorption of zinc. See, there's going to be a lot of calcium in there, but not much, much zinc. So the, you'll still absorb the calcium. You're not getting the zinc. You need zinc for brain health because zinc creates... Um, SOD type 1 and 3 that shield the brain from dementia and diseases, and SOD type 1 and 3 drop with age, so you don't want any less. You need the zinc to activate that. Uh, you need zinc um, for vision. Without zinc, you can go blind and, and also develop cataracts. Uh, you need zinc for heart health that reduces inflammation in your heart. You need zinc for healing. You need zinc for your thyroid to work, you know, for your metabolism and energy production, etc. Uh, you need zinc to digest your food. Your pancreas cannot con uh, di uh, contribute to digesting food if you lack zinc a little bit. Uh, you need zinc to control your blood sugar. There's four minerals that are intimately involved with blood sugar control. Vanadium a little bit, chromium quite, quite intensively, magnesium, and zinc. You need to know, for diabetics need those to control their blood sugar. Everybody needs those to control their blood sugar. Um, and you need zinc for your immune system. So too much calcium will attach to the zinc. You'll still absorb the calcium because there's a lot more, but you won't absorb the zinc. Selenium. 
if there's a lot of calcium you're not absorbing selenium and there's only a little selenium in there and to begin with because it's a micronutrient you need zinc for detoxification now you know you go into a health food store and you see these products that say detoxify what are they talking about what do they mean do they mean like as a laxative or do they mean essentially what's important to the body breaking down chemicals and removing them which is true detoxification that takes place mostly in the liver and kidneys not just there but mostly in the liver and kidneys selenium is at the core of the ability of your liver and your kidneys to deactivate dangerous chemicals and break them down and remove them from the body you also need selenium for the structure of the heart you need selenium for liver health you're more likely to have liver damage if you lack selenium and you need it for lowering the risk of cancer so that's just some of the uses for zinc that I mentioned before and for selenium. And if there's too much calcium, you're not absorbing them. Iron. If there's too much calcium, you're not absorbing your iron. You need iron to protect your brain and your eyes. It creates something called neuroglobin. You need iron for stamina and energy and strength because it makes myoglobin in your muscles that allows your muscles to use oxygen for energy. You need um, iron for metabolism because it makes hemoglobin, the red stuff in your blood cells. You need iron to protect the body because it makes a very important antioxidant, enzyme antioxidant system called catalase that protects you from peroxides. When you eat food, when you breathe, and when you do something physical, you release peroxides. You need iron for your immune cells. Your immune cells actually use iron to kill certain germs. Uh, so that's just some of the uses for iron. Now, a little calcium is okay in your multi, but if there's too much, it's going to overpower your uh, your other minerals, your micro minerals. You're not going to absorb them, and you're going to be in trouble. So take your calcium separately. Don't buy a multivitamin that has a lot of calcium in it. Uh, you know, 100, 150 milligrams is okay. More than that wouldn't do it. So uh, we're talking about today about a well-created, well-designed multivitamin using high quality ingredients, how it's very important to fill in the holes in your diet so you have sufficient levels of key vitamins and minerals for your immune system, which is very important. We're going into cough and cold season. We're going into flu season. We're going into pneumonia season. COVID-19 is still around. I would strongly recommend you start taking a high quality multivitamin. I really would. Now, Thank you for tuning in to the Invite Health Podcast. And by the way, if you have a question on anything I say, I'll give you my email address, jhickey at invitehealth.com, jhickey at invitehealth.com. I'll also give you another one that connects to five of my nutritionists, nutrition at invitehealth.com. This way, if you have a question on anything I said. So thanks for tuning in. You can find all of the episodes for free wherever you listen. Uh, uh, or the podcast page we have, invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. You could go there. Uh, please subscribe and please leave us a review. You can also see us on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. And I hope to see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Mm-hmm.